Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. This week I want to share a video from my professional ethical hacking course relevant to CEH version 11 on web architecture footprinting. Footprinting means we're gathering intelligence about a network that we're performing an assessment against. Also, a quick disclaimer, please do not perform this against a network for any reason unless you explicitly have permission to do so or unless it's your own network. This video is for educational purposes only, just to demonstrate the discovery mechanisms that professionals use quite often. I'm working in my own personal virtual lab with equipment that I own, and I'm not performing these actions against any real world devices. With that said, let's jump in and take a look at some web application footprinting. Inside of Parrot OS, which is the operating system that I'm working in, there are many tools included for footprinting that we can apply to web architecture. So let's start here in the terminal with one of those tools called Nick2. And just to clarify what I've got going here, I have an installation of Parrot OS security. I'm running that as a virtual machine. And I also have a virtual machine, which is the OWASP Broken Web Applications Project. That's a tool that's free that you can set up in your own home lab for testing out the tools in Parrot OS or even Kali Linux. And this essentially creates many different virtual instances of various web applications that you can try to point your tools at. And it's a great learning tool if you're just starting out. If you want to learn more about that, you can find a link in the video description below. If we say Nick 2 h 10.0.2.4, in my case, again, I'm running the broken web apps VM from OWASP. And of course we see the vast amount of information that Nick2 can provide. We see information about potential vulnerabilities that are in place with service versions. We see the versions of the server being used. We see this is using Apache. And of course we see some different vulnerabilities listed here that points us to CVE listings as well. So this is a tool we can use to begin footprinting and researching. Let's break out of this output. And another tool we may use that we've looked at before is Nmap. So let's say Nmap 10.0.2.4. And this of course returns some results regarding some open ports and services that are currently in use on the web server. With this output, we may wanna take note of some open ports that could be of interest. Some of these ports could help us do what we call banner grabbing, where we're reaching out to a server and we're trying to get that to return information about the remote host. That could be the operating system, the software versions, and more. So we do see that this has port 22 open for TCP. So let's use a utility called Netcat. And in order to run this utility in Parrot OS or in Kali, we can say NC, short for Netcat, and I'll say 10.0.2.4. And after that, we can indicate a particular port number. I'll use port 22 because SSH is open. And you can see that this actually tells us the SSH version, 2.0 open SSH 5.3. And we also see that this is a Debian Ubuntu based system. So we have grabbed a banner here and we've gathered more information during our footprinting process. Let's break out of this output and talk about another command called wget. That's W-G-E-T. So the wget command was created in order to retrieve contents and files from various web servers. It supports downloads through all kinds of different protocols like HTTP, FTP, and HTTPS, among others. So let's say we're trying to capture the HTTP banner of a remote server that's serving an HTTP website. We can use the wget command. We can use the dash Q option. That particular flag is going to cover up the progress of our output. In other words, this tells it to do this quietly. And if we say dash S, this will actually print out the header information of all of our requested web pages. So let's point that to 10.0.2.4 and we'll hit enter. And here we can see that we have likewise grabbed our HTTP banner. We see the HTTP response message here, 200 for okay, meaning that this was a successful request that we made. And of course we see lots of helpful information, including the server that's running and different service versions, along with things like the date that this was last modified. Another way that we can do this is through a tool called Burp Suite. So let's minimize my terminal here. And in Parrot OS, we actually have a shortcut on the desktop in this particular distribution version for Burp Suite. So let's click that and get that launched. 
When we open that, we can choose to open a temporary project or we can do a new file. In my case, I'm just gonna go with a temporary project here. I'm going to use burp defaults, although we can create and load our own configuration files. And let's get this up and going. So now burp suite is loaded. And one of the main functions that we can use inside of burp suite is the proxy function. So you'll see along the top, we have a tab for the proxy. And if we click in that, you'll see that proxy intercept is on. We also have the option to open a browser. So let's open the browser. Let's click this button and you'll see that this launches an internal browser that actually works through burp suite. This is a proxy browser. And that means that anywhere we try and go to from this browser, it's going to be intercepted by burp suite so that we can interpret the information being passed between our browser and the target server. So let's put in 10.0.2.4, which is our broken web app server. And let's try to navigate to one of these training applications. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that we have the loading bar here at the top, and that's because these requests are being intercepted. So if we click back into our main OWASP window, you'll see we have a forward button, and we actually have to continue to click this forward button until our website is completely loaded. So you can see here we have an option for a sign-in that's popped up. We'll just cancel out of that. We'll go back and continue forwarding through this in Burp Suite. And of course we get an error in our website. So once we've forwarded through everything, we can look at the HTTP history and see the history of everything that's happened. So if I click on this, you'll notice that right here in our request data, this is data that was intercepted. We've interpreted a request in Burp Suite and we've been able to actually capture the banner. We can see things like the directory here, the host IP address. Let's click on a different request here and see what else we've gathered. So you can see we have an inspector on the right-hand side that will give us a little bit more information. We can drop this down and look at some response headers. We see our server, Apache Coyote 1.1, and we see some other basic information. So just a different option for banner grabbing that we have at our disposal. That's using the Burp Suite proxy. Let's close this software out. We'll close all of our windows and we'll look at one other tool here, which is called OWASP Z Attack Proxy. Again, we see this on the desktop, OWASP-ZAP. So let's click that and get that launched. With these options, we're asked if we want to persist the ZAP session. In my case, I'll just say no. And let's go out to my Firefox browser here. And if I actually take my broken web application IP address, as you can see, I've put that into my address bar here, 10.0.2.4. And inside of that, we have various applications available to us. So if we look at one as an example, this OWASP Mutilla Day 2, I have that open at a different tab. And this is a sample login that we can try to test against. So this is just one of the tools included inside of OWASP. So let's actually highlight this URL and let's copy that and we'll try this against this particular application that's inside of my web app server. We'll go back into OWASP Z attack proxy. And one thing we can do is an automated scan. So let's click that. This OWASP Z attack proxy, by the way, this is one of the most popular free web security tools out there. It's very powerful and it has great automation features that can help us quickly discover places that are vulnerable. Let's paste our URL inside of this box. Let's scroll down a bit and let's say attack. And once we do that, you can see the attack process here. In other words, it's scanning this URL. It's looking for all sorts of things. It's looking for vulnerabilities. It's looking for any directories that we might have in place and more. So let's give this just a bit of a moment to run. And once this completes at 100%, we'll take a look at some of our results and talk about those. Okay, our scan is now completed, so let's take a look at some of the things we found. If we look here at the bottom, we have an alerts menu. So if we click on that, this is going to show us all kinds of different alerts about the target. So for example, if I expand this vulnerable JavaScript library, this shows areas where JavaScript has a particular vulnerability, and it outlines some of the reasons why. This is JavaScript version 1.3.2 and we can see the details about how this was found and how this was automated. 
Let's go and look inside of X-Frame options. We see the header is not set and so on. We see lots of alerts listed here. We see private IP exposure. If we look at this and drill down into that, we see the private IP addresses that are being shared here. So lots and lots of information that we can find. We can also use this to do something called spidering. Spidering is automatically discovering hidden contents or directories. And if we look under our spider section, look at all of the different URLs that were found. In fact, this says 813 URLs have been found. And if we scroll up through this list, they're obviously going to be numerous because this particular web server that I'm using does have many applications built into it. You can see our robots.txt file that we talked about earlier in a different video. We see a sitemap.xml file. So lots and lots of information here. Z attack proxy is a very powerful tool. So these are just a few options to mention for footprinting web architecture. Again, some of these that we've looked at are more specific to web applications and others are more general that are gonna get us started like Netcat and Nick2, as well as Nmap. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.